I think it's an unusual platform for the CEO of a supermarket chain. After all, we, you know, we're retailers, not a media company. In fact, we're the second largest retailer in the world and the biggest in the UK. But I'm going to use the next 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less than that, to tell you why I think our industries are facing pretty similar challenges and why digital media is absolutely at the heart of my strategy, which I can get on a sheet of paper, uh, a strategy to create the leading multi-channel retailer for the future. I've spent, by the way, my 40 years retailing career at Tesco, but even to someone outside the media, I can see uh, how profoundly your industry is being changed. Retailing is changing too. We're having to shape our business for the digital age. And there's a lot of talk about multi-channel and omni-channel, uh, but my definition, the word I prefer, is multi-channel, and my definition is simple. It's about putting the customer back in control and enabling him or her to engage and to transact with Tesco in whatever way suits them best, you know, physically or digitally, transactionally or, or non-transactionally. Being driven by the consumer, it's a demanding, connected, discerning 21st century consumer we've got these days. The changing way in which people are shopping is presenting some very well-documented challenges for retailers. Um, not everyone wants to shop in big stores, Convenience stores are the growth format all over the world. People are increasingly choosing to shop online. 8% of our sales in the UK in December were digital, not, not physical. Uh, and they especially want to buy non-food items like televisions and buy their entertainment digitally. So big stores, no longer it for everybody. Those changes are bringing about big challenges. But we're, uh, we're not trying to resist them. Indeed, we've decided to embrace them because I think the digital revolution brings great opportunities, opportunities to offer customers products and services they never have expected from us. Opportunities to surprise and delight them. Opportunities to strengthen relationships with them. And I'm going to talk about the way in which we're doing that, some of the ways in which we're doing that. But first, let me explain why I think it's really important for a company like us to engage with customers in different ways. The most important commodity we have, whether we're a newspaper or a magazine or a retailer, is the loyalty of our consumers. But of course, those consumers have now got endless choice. They can choose to shop where they like. You can you know, lose their loyalty so much quicker than you ever could before. And for a big company, that ubiquity used to be a strength. Now, unfortunately, bigger doesn't automatically mean better. So what big companies have to do is demonstrate how they use their size to do more for society, to do more for customers, and importantly, to deliver a genuinely tailored offer for shoppers a personalized experience that you know, suits customers, every individual customer, how they want to be treated. We know a lot about our customers. Uh, we have a unique advantage in this respect. We've got Clubcard. There are 43 million customers using Clubcard each week around the world in 12 markets. It gives us an awful lot of insight. It enables us to send customers tailored offers that are relevant to their weekly shop. And we're fortunate that we own Dunhumby, one of the world leaders in the analysis of customer data. We're two and a half thousand colleagues at Dunhumby uh, in 37 countries, analyzing the data of just over 500 million consumers. The insight that they provide helps Tesco and others to understand customers' lifestyles, their needs, their wants, in a way that uh, few other retailers can. We've got a unique relationship with customers. But I don't think it needs to be restricted to their weekly shop. Food's always going to be important to Tesco. Uh, we share our customers' passion for it. But it's not all that matters. And entertainment is one of the things which we think binds families together and is where we can play an even more important part in the lives of our customers. It's a sector that's been transformed by the internet, 
uh, the internet revolution affecting home entertainment. I know Sky shared their view of the future earlier on today. Back to the similarities between your industry and mine. Um, it's all about content. If you look at the program in this conference, you know, it's clear that compelling content drives success for you. Uh, your content's a bit different to mine. You provide words and images. I provide food and drink. Just in the last six months, we've spent millions, tens of millions of pounds on product development, creating new products that reflect the changing way people are living. This is an example here on the screen. We've seen a very big shift towards customers who want to live healthier lives. Uh, and so we've invested uh, in lots of new products, 400 new healthy living products. And we've also increased the amount of space we allocate to them in each of our stores. It's this deep understanding of what customers want that means we're well placed to provide a content-based offer in other areas and not just related to the weekly shop. We've got the data, we've got the insight, we can develop products and services that customers want. I'll explain now about our investment in digital entertainment. There are three reasons for investing. Firstly, it's a very powerful way that we can engage customers. High emotional connection with books, with music and films that are consumed frequently. They're passions. They're vital parts of how we live and endure our life. And so they work powerfully to strengthen our relationship with customers. Just watch this video and uh, hopefully you'll see what I mean. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. It's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. You know how I feel. Uh, that's how I felt on that morning when Rory came to my office. He said it was cheesy m music. It was actually Bastille, uh, and it was very good indeed. So it makes you happy, and um, I think digital entertainment can help us build a connection with customers through devices on which they're increasingly living their lives. Michael Comish, the founder of Blinkbox, is here today. 65% smartphone penetration in the UK already. This is the way people are living their lives. It's starting to drive the growth of e-commerce. The mobile phone is a perfect device to listen to music, a tablet, perfect for reading a book. And these are the devices that are allowing e-commerce to grow. So there's a clear synergy here between our food business, our general merchandise, our F&F clothing business, uh, the core business of Tesco, and these evolving new opportunities. Thirdly, it helps us with brand perception. We're moving from just being a traditional bricks and mortar retailer to one with a much broader range of services and products reflecting the way customers are living their lives. Now, we're not the first company to recognize this. Apple did it with iTunes. The mobile phone operators have been bundling music and services for a while. And you know, Samsung have just launched Milk Music in the USA, 13 million tracks for free on a Galaxy device. So the new digital entertainment services we're, off, we're offering bring to life our commitment to serve our customers in different and exciting ways, in relevant ways that meet their everyday needs. And we've seen a fundamental shift in how people are consuming media. You know, as in retail, consumers are more demanding there. They want to be in charge. They want to consume the product how, where, and when it suits them. They expect the experience and the service to be absolutely faultless, faultless. Good enough, no longer good enough. Physical, replacing digital. Schedules, a thing of the past. Today it's about on demand at a time of the customer's choosing. It's no longer about products and ownership. 
It's about services and access. The TV, just one of the screens through which people consume media today. The services we've developed have sought to reflect and meet these changing consumer demands. When we invested in Blinkbox in 2011, it was already the UK's leading movie streaming business. Today, we've grown the business into music and soon, very soon, into books. Blinkbox Movies now offers 20,000 of the world's best movies and TV shows to buy or to rent, no subscription. Blinkbox Music, 12 million songs, free of charge on a PC, a tablet or a mobile. And when Blinkbox Books offers, um, it'll have all the best sellers on PC and the most popular tablets and mobiles. Great services meeting the clear demands of consumers in today's digital connected world. But there's a much broader benefit to Tesco. All the evidence we have tells us that customers who shop across channels with Tesco spend more. We call it the multiplying effect. You can see it here on this chart. It's because it builds their emotional connection with the brand. That loyalty is reinforced when we offer them additional products and services that they wouldn't have expected from Tesco in a few months' time. We launch a personal current account here in the UK on a smartphone from a supermarket? Absolutely. These are services our customers and their families want. What they love, though, is that we're surprising them. We offer them a little thank you from us to them in their homes. And that's why, and our research backs it up, that the more services the customer use, the more likely they to stay loyal to Tesco. Tesco's got to be different. It's got to innovate. It must create. This is how we set ourselves apart from the rest. Now, we aren't just giving consumers access to content. Uh, we see part of our role as being that of democratizing technology. When I think about you know, the 40 years I've been at Tesco, one of the greatest achievements of supermarkets, not just us, is that we've made products accessible, which had previously been unattainable to the many. In the past, it might have been the humble avocado. Today's avocado is the tablet computer. I'm guessing to an urbane audience like this, many people just take this technology for granted. Yet it's only got 35% penetration in the UK today. Before Christmas, it was down at 25%. Last summer, we commissioned research which found that 70% of those who didn't have a tablet wanted one, but were put off by not understanding, not trusting, or not being able to afford. That's why we developed the huddle. Um, we worked on it for a couple of years. Um, it sold out at Christmas. We've sold over half a million. We're selling 10,000 a week at the moment. But it's more than just a new product in the best traditions of Tesco. You can't quite see it on this image, but if you look down to the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the T. The T button on the huddle seamlessly connects customers to the world of Tesco. Opens up a world of movies and music, opens up their current account, opens up their grocery home shopping. They can even buy clothing, order wine, and even find a store if they don't know where the local one is. It served as a bit of a catapult, too, for our online businesses. Blinkbox movies and Blinkbox music in particular. Uh, Ninefold increase in Blinkbox movies since launch and five times increase in Blinkbox music. And it's going to be great when the books launches soon. I think there's another really important thing about Blinkbox and the other businesses we've brought in to our family. They have an energizing effect on Tesco as a whole. We've got an app development center in Clerkenwell, 40 dedicated colleagues building the user experiences for Tesco all the way around the world for all of our businesses. They sit opposite uh, an 800-strong team who run Blinkbox and are continuing to build out that offer. But we're not keeping them at arm's length from Tesco. Quite the opposite. We bring digital skills right into the heart of the business. They provide invaluable uh, support to the company. Michael Comish, I mentioned, uh, from Blinkbox, who now our group digital officer, helping to change the way Tesco works. Robin Terrell, one of Amazon's first employees, now our multi-channel director. Digital at the heart of a business. It's too late for a digital strategy. Every aspect of your strategy needs to be digital. So to summarize and get to the questions, I think you understand what we're trying to do. I hope that you like it. And I'm going to stop there. And let Rory ask me some questions. Thank you for listening.